get over on the gun channel side. Good morning, everybody. This is Travis P. Love, and welcome to Caliber Corner episode number 84. We have a lot of topics for today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about just basic bore sighting, some of the different options that you have out there to do so. We're also going to talk about, uh, well, we'll get to this in a little bit, the AK SKS 762 by 39 platform and why we think it's incredible. Everybody on the panel agrees with me on that one. And uh, the last topic is uh, we got to get serious about this one. When when should we take away the guns? And we're talking about family, all the red flag laws going out there. Uh, I almost feel like it's more the responsibility of the family and not the state to see to it when it's time to take away the guns. And again, that's agree or disagree could be an interesting discussion, but we'll get to that when we get there. So let's go ahead and uh, well, let's just see who's joining us on the uh, the gun channel side today. We'll see if we got anybody over there this morning. There's usually a couple people over there hanging out. Uh, we got paper plane crash over there on the gun channel side. There's a few people that are active and then join it in. Let's see over here on the YouTube side. We've got the mech with us. Good morning, mech. Squib loads there and here. Casino boss, poor conservative, get a cup of coffee. Hootie who in the house. Hey, Travis. Hey, guys, check out Hootie Who's channel. It is fantastic. Man, there ain't anything that guy won't shoot. Uh, Cadillac Jack is out there. Scott P79. Jason Stewart is in the house. What kind of polish? What? Oh, that's a question he's got for somebody. Uh, tacos and French fries is out there. Drew Super SS Pond Stan is in the house. Uh, let's see. Night Strike One is out there and here. Frank the Tank Hellman is with us this morning as usual. And that's pretty much about it. There'll be more people joining in as we uh, as we get going. So, as always, we like to let the panel introduce themselves, put a little plug in for their channel, and uh, we will go from there. So, Tony, let us start with you. What's up, man? How you doing? Uh, I'm just living the life of adventures of babysitting. <laughs> Is that my kids in the background? You got you guys yeah. wrestling back there or what? Uh, just the way the house is laid out there. Wow. They're loud. Except uh, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, let's see. So Hootie Who. Hootie Who, we'll get to that in a minute. I'll, I'll talk about that in a sec, buddy. Um, all right. So, Tony, um, so give us an update. Any any chance for early watch? Is the internet situation looking any better? No, the internet here isn't, isn't any good at all either. And I don't know what the deal is because it should be. Mm. Maybe have the connect connections going into your home. We lived in a like fourplex that had some serious issues and they always said, oh, it's, I mean, it would drop constantly. It was a combination of the service, but also the connection. They had to like crank something up for us to have a decent accessibility to bandwidth, even get close to what we were paying for. So it was, it was actually wiring problems with the house, which was kind of interesting, but all right, man. So Tony, thanks for joining us. Squib, what's going on? Are you going to be going to speak squibbish to us this morning or what? No, I typically don't release videos on the weekends and, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm always saying, oh, I'm working on this. I'm working on that. I got more projects than I have uh, projects completed. I've got, I've got all kinds of notes. I've actually got a notebook, and if I get an idea at work, I start writing down stuff. And I, I haven't done done a lot with that. And then I've got some that are recorded, some voiceovers that I got to find some unused footage to match it to that's the whole thing I, I you know any of the any of the footage that gets scrapped uh that's just what i use in the background they're they're more for listening to than than watching there's nothing really interesting to watch um but uh i i've got some that i'll uh i'll release next week i've been working on a uh a reload video where i actually made three versions of the same video they're all a little bit different I made one for GunTube, one for GunStreamer, and one for YouTube, and I forget. it took me two weeks. What a pain in the butt! But it was it was kind of fun. I wanted to try to do something like this, so it was kind of fun to do the project. But it was work. So oh, and yeah, then, I'm not promising it. anything spectacular. Uh, yeah. I mean, the videos are about 15 to 18 minutes long, but uh, I just I go into detail explaining about case trimming. So okay. no, I'll be cool, releasing man. those next week. Well, it is, it is essential in many situations. I mean, it's one of those things where you got to learn about it when you can, and you got to learn it the right way. So, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I filmed different stages and so, uh, and I used two different cameras and, you know, I, I'd go back and I'd watch it. And then the next day I'd be like, ah, crap. And then I'd go reshoot something. So it's all chopped up, but I don't really care. Uh, I, I had fun making them. So. That's what matters. That's that's all that matters, man. Is you had a good time with it, and you know you, you had fun, and you know we got something out there we can learn for, and I think that's probably that's probably one of the most important things. So, 
man, keep doing it. The videos are, are getting better and better every time, man. They're good. They're fun to watch. Well, eventually I'll, I'll get that editing software you, you suggested. Um, oh. One of the things I needed uh, to improve uh, is a, uh, a larger external hard drive to store oh. more stuff. That just came in this week. So okay. I'm, I'm gradually getting this stuff. I, I, I'm not going to okay. invest a whole lot of money at once into it. Yeah. So I said, first thing I need is more storage. Then the next thing I need is better software. And then yeah. eventually maybe I'll get uh, another camera, maybe try something else. I mean, that, that cheap little... Fifty, sixty dollar, four K camera. My my cell phone does better than that. So they're, they're yeah, they advertise it, but it makes you wonder if you're really getting that kind of resolution. So, but well, uh, I don't want to get a GoPro because if I break it or lose it, I'm going to be ticked off about yeah. how much I spent on it. You know, it's it's yeah, kind of like hundred dollars uh, basically for a really good one, maybe three for a, yeah. So I, all right, but I, I think I would I think I would improve my video mm -hmm. some if I had better equipment too. Cool. All right, man. So Sandhills, give us a little intro. Tell us a little bit about your channel. Where can we find you? Well, the first place you can find me is most mornings, at least the beginning part of the show. You can find me right here on Caliber Corner on the Travis P11 channel. All right, man. But uh, you can go check out Sandhill Shooter channel on YouTube or GunStreamer um, or GunTube. You can find it, uh, Sandhill Shooter on Facebook. A lot of stuff goes up there. Um but uh, we do have a, a live chat, excuse me, every Tuesday night, 9 Central Time, called 2A Tuesday, where we talk about uh, things Second Amendment related, sometimes not so Second Amendment related. But uh, we try to always have a, a good heartfelt discussion among our panelists and our, uh, and our audience, too. So give that a look. Um, we might be making a few different adjustments and, and doing a couple different things with those live chats. There might be one coming up where we, uh, um, I'm trying to figure out a way without having to spend a ton of money where I can, I can simulcast on Facebook at the same time. Oh, okay. um, and there may be a, a live show coming up here before too long where, uh, it's just Ant Hill sweetheart and me, no panelists. Um, and we do just kind of, uh, an intimate chat with our, with our audience, kind of like, uh, um, what Matt does on Sunday afternoons okay. on never enough ammo, something like that. We're, we're kicking around that idea, trying that, uh, if it works well, we might do that like one, one week out of the month, but, uh, yeah, you never know what you're going to find on our channel. So cool. give it a look. We do have some stuff coming up. Um, I've got a request from a, uh, uh, I don't want to say a dear friend or a, or a, a dear viewer. Um, this guy is just kind of a, He's just there a lot, but um, he wants to see the bearded dragons. So that oh, video. Yeah. <laughs> be... <laughs> Dude, I don't know who that, that would be. Tabletop review, bearded dragon. dragon. Tabletop review. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we may put a little bit more dragon-related content out on the channel, uh, or I might develop a B channel for that. We'll see. Okay. Cool. And now that's not a bad idea. So I've got some mm. reptile videos that I've kept on the side there. I. I would like to make a few more before I release them. Maybe I should put those on my B channel. There you go. Thanks, Sand Hills. Yeah, I'm squib, here for you. Squib the snake load. <laughs> oh, man. That was not funny. Okay, nice track. What's going on, bro? Oh, I'm here. Yeah. Yes, you are. Um, you were early. You were saying, hey, man, let's fire it up. I'm like, dude, I didn't even have my breakfast yet. You know, like, come on, let's do this. What's going on, nice track? You seem well, to be pretty uh, excited today, man. Uh, we're, we're talking about AKs and SKS. Of course, I can use Ah, yes, we're, we are. We're talking about guns I actually have. There we go. This is going to be a fun one, too. And guns maybe some I mean, people on the panel don't have, but should. So I mean, I, I have lots of ARs. I have, you know, I have a C308 HK91 copy. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have an SKS and an AK, and I love both of them. Right on, man. Cool. So By the uh, way, check, check me out on uh, Night Strike yeah. 1 channel on YouTube. And uh, exclusively on GunTube.org. What about your podcast? Where can one find you if they're looking for it? Aside from the fact that you're on many other podcasts out there. In the <laughs> I'm like on everybody world. else's. But you got your own, and it is called? Yeah. Hit or Miss, every Tuesday night, 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock Central Time, for those that care. Uh, Eastern. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Eastern. Just wait for the tide to raise, and then you'll be moving to Central Time. So, All right, man. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, <laughs> Not going to happen. All right, all right. I'd rather so, go back to Mountain Time. <laughs> Water world, bring it on. Nice. There's the bearded dragon right there. Oh, he's making coffee for us. Okay. <laughs> oh, you got the uh which one is that? 
G -S gunship. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, this one was called Gunship. My order came in the other day, and I got uh, some Just Black. I got some Gunship and some Silencer Smooth. So, yeah. Gunship seems to be uh, pretty decent stuff right now. It's it's working. You know, I'm whatever you do, don't don't, don't don't make coffee coffee review videos. videos. Do not make coffee review videos. Whatever you do, they're, they're just. <laughs> the, look, I'm telling you, in the end, they pay off. I'm just saying. Caffeine. They, they pay off in alertness and uh, and happiness. So there you go. And, and eventually, other companies start sending you free stuff, right? Maybe. They, yeah, they might send you exclusive blends just for reviewers. Travis P. Levin blend. <laughs> Squib load blend. The only kind that gets stuck in your tube. We just need a gun channels blend. The thing is, it's going to yeah. be a little bit nutty. Oh, God. Uh, it's a bit nutty, isn't it? <laughs> I want a part of uh, we're just we're just honored today. So let, let's go on. Let's continue with the introductions. Let's let everybody everybody say their piece here. So we got the original Kingpin, David Bowling, joining us from Maryland. How you doing, sir? Kingpin, what's going on today, man? Uh, not too bad. And I feel the shame every single day. I do not own an AK. <laughs> was that a haiku? You just wrote a gun haiku. You wrote a gun coup. That hey, was awesome. <laughs> the creative juices flow early in the morning. All right, man. Heck yeah, that's what we want to hear. We I probably it, won't so. say anything interesting for the rest of the day. <laughs> Actually, no, I, th man. I thought they were poor get, in the morning. I hear you, David, on those on the other podcast. I think you're just waking up. The other podcast, you're pretty fired up, man. When it comes to the politics, when it comes to riots, man, you you are definitely a trailblazer for for where you are, especially the place that you're at. You know, being in Maryland and stuff, and the restrictions. You are definitely making sure that people are aware of what's going on. So that's a good thing. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you get a little ex overexcited, but uh. No. You got to bring it back and just and just try to, you know, let people know that don't yeah. let what happens here happen to you guys. You know, watch yeah. watch what happens here and say we don't want that. Yeah, we have a lot of people in other countries that comment on our videos too, and they say, hey, don't don't <laughs> please don't become like this country or that country, whether it's you know England or Australia or whatnot. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it. We definitely need to stay vigilant. That is for sure. Man, we got a lot of people chatting over there. Um, all right, so Calaveras, Calaveras. Please tell us how you doing today, sir. What's going on? If I can get to my mute button, uh, <laughs> sorry, doing all right. That's where I just got my. Uh, I don't. If anybody follows me on Instagram, that's where they know I had a bit of a setback on my reloading bench here a couple weeks ago. Finally got it repaired and just bolted my press down this morning, and I'm starting to play with it. Okay. Cool, man. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun once you get that going. Well, you've, you've reloaded in the past, haven't you? Yeah. I have. It's been a couple of years, but I have. Okay, okay cool, cool. All right, man, cool. Uh, so, Calaveras, what can we see coming up on your channel? Do you have any new content coming coming our way? Uh, yeah, that's for all the work I did on the bench. I uh, did short videos on what was going on with it, some review of the tools I was using. Uh, I'm going to try to put some reloading-related content on, uh, see if I can't get some fishing-related content this summer. Cool. Um, just a little bit of anything I find interesting. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Oh, you know, oh, go the ahead. coffee that you know Santel said you got with the silencer smooth and the, and the gunship mm -hmm. proves that he has some decent taste because it's the same stuff I drink. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I like all the black rifle blends. Calf is probably my favorite. I like the calf okay. one and the F hipster blend is definitely a classic. I've tried many of them. Of course I have decent taste. Have you seen the people I hang out with on Saturday mornings? There you go. There you go. <laughs> this is the lively crowd. This is the crowd to be with. So, All right. So, And, and last but not least, we got the young buck, AWAG. AWAG, what's new What's new in your world, man? How you been doing? AKs. AKs galore. Um, and you're, are you excited? Because we're going to talk AKs here. I know you I know you got to get you got to get going to the range, so we'll go into the AK topic here. We'll push boar siding off to topic number two, but... Uh, uh, so, so are you working on something? You building something? What, what are you putting I'm together these days? On one, two, three, four projects right now. Um, oh yeah, I know it's big hassle. Um, I have a Romanian AKM that I'm building. I have a Polish AKM that I'm building for a friend. And uh, well, I'm not building it for him. I'm teaching him how to build one so he can do it himself when he gets all the machinery himself. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm building a Romanian PSL. Uh, that's big hassle right now. Um, I suggest if you do build a PSL, just take your time and buy some really, really good tools. Um, because some of the barrel pins and things like that are an absolute pain. Um, and I'm working on a Yugoslavian M76 sniper rifle. That's its title. 
So even Ooh. though it's a semi-automatic eight millimeter Mauser AK, so that's, oh, that's my projects right now. Busy man, and, and you're honing your skills because at some point, night wagon rifle works will become a reality, and then people will just be flocking to you for your your uh, your home brewed AKs, right? Working on it. There you go. So uh, one thing I want to show off here real quick is I didn't get a chance to show this off last week. Frank the Tank Hellman sent me a care package a week or two ago. And one of the items that was in the care package was the goat gun. So he sent us, this is a pink, I call it like a, like a picnic table uh, uh, camo. <laughs> and the funny part is I took this out of the box when, and I showed it to my wife and she goes, oh, I have to have that. So my wife actually put this together and I, I had it sitting on the desk last week, but I didn't get a chance to show it off. So you guys need to definitely get yourself a goat gun. It's got the little drop down dust cover, which is really nice. It does have a uh, magazine that has rounds. in. Oh yeah, I actually have to push the... Uh, release on it to get the magazine out but the go guns are awesome i know you guys have seen them before and they show up quite a bit on other channels but uh, yeah they're a lot of fun you got a collapsible stock it does have a suppressor don't worry i do have my uh, my tax stand for the suppressor so uh but yeah these are a lot of fun you guys have these at all you guys got go guns or not no i don't have one not yet they're very cool i know a lot of wow. the gun channels like to give these away and stuff and they're they're they're, they're kind of fun it does have a regular uh, compensator for the front that you can put on it but so Frank the Tank, I want to thank you for that. That is cool. That's going to be going on my wife's desk, which is pretty sweet. And speaking of which, I wanted to uh, to make a quick announcement here. Um, I will probably, in the near future, be moving Caliber Corner to an evening time. Uh, the reason why is because my wife did get her dream job. And so we're going to be moving at some point. Um, she is actually starting her job next month. As for me, I, we're not really ready to pack up, sell the house uh me find another teaching job in the next five weeks and so i'm actually going to take a year before i get to move and so that's going to be happening so the weekends are going to be occupied with us moving so i'm going to be moving caliber corner to an evening time i'm thinking about going before sarge's show on thursdays i would be sure to stop at the time that uh, sarge's show starts and so we'll probably be looking at at thursdays from it would be six to eight central time i'm thinking or something like that it would stop before his show five to seven basically so I don't know how that's going to work with you guys, but that's something I'm going to have to do because the mornings, I don't feel like broadcasting from the road when I'm on the highway or the interstate. So I'm happy for my wife. She's been trying to get this job for a long time. And uh, she's, you know, the big thing is she's been getting beat out by people that have administrative experience and you need to get into a position to get administer, administrative experience. And she finally uh, is going to have a position that's going to give her that. So that's something that's going to happen. So it'll be a move. It'll be a big deal. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. I'm really excited for for me. You know, I love I love where I live and I love teaching where I live, but I, I'll be looking for another school at some point in the near future. So I wanted to get that out right now. So I, the videos, will, I don't think there's going to be any. any. I'll, still, I'll keep releasing videos like I normally do. I'm going to keep my range membership, keep shooting stuff and everything. But uh, but just as a quick heads up, we'll be looking probably in April starting on Thursday nights. Just let you guys know. So I think that's a time slot. I hope it's not occupied by anybody. I'm sure I'll be overshadowing somebody. But when I looked on the gun channel's calendar, I didn't see anybody on for basically five to seven central time, six to eight central time. So six to uh, eight would be uh, on YouTube TGC surplus. I know there's a lot of people on gun channels that don't like the gun collective, but they do a Thursday show. Then other than that, I'm not aware of any other live shows around that time. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, I'm probably just going to go ahead and tell G webs to change the calendar to say that. So that'll be happening in the next couple of weeks. But um, again, it's, it's, it, she just found out yesterday. And so it's been, it's been a pretty neat, uh, it'll be really neat. We'll be closer to our family overall, uh, which is going to be a good thing. It'll put us within about an hour of the family. Right now, we live about almost three hours away. So, uh, but anyway, so that's I can going actually on. sleep in then. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. I'll be closer to East Coast time. So, yes, yes, yes. But uh, I did. I did let the you know at my workplace. I did let my administration know that I was going to be moving in a year. Okay, it's not a big deal. But there's a lot of positions that I currently occupy that'll have to be filled. So I wanted to give them plenty of time. So anyway, enough with that. Um, so let's, let's get into it. And so this was the question that we had from, uh, Nate 2099, his question, his comments, oh, where did it go? I'm going to have to look at it. Here it is. He said, uh, another suggestion for caliber corner would be to cover 762 by 39 in depth, which we covered it quite a bit as a hunting round. Uh, you can show off your Ruger ranch and an AK and an SKS. Just take a deep dive into why it's so awesome and will continue to be around and relevant. So if you don't have an AK and you're sitting on this panel, it's no big deal, but we were just going to maybe talk about what we have and why we love it. So 
Nice Strike, what is it about the AK and the SKS that that really that you enjoy? Because you've got an AK, you've got an SKS, you've got one of the first SKSs ever made, right? As we well, had one first of couple years of production, yeah, one of the first well, ones well, made. Well, one of the first Chinese. Okay. But uh, yeah, no, uh, I just like them because the fact that they're uh, they're in a caliber that's easy to find right now. Yeah, it's cheap. I mean, and you can get forty rounds of steel case two twenty three for for ten dollars, but you can also get forty rounds of 762 by 39 for for ten dollars at walmart if you just want to go to right. um oh, there's also the fact that the, with the sks and e even the most in the grounds it, there's always something about a surplus gun now from an investment standpoint sks rifles are starting to go up a lot yeah. i mean I, you said you bought yours for how much a hundred about you know two years you know what was it 2019 now I bought mine in 2014, 15 for like uh, 150 bucks. Okay. One and of the last it, imports to come into the country. Now, if you just cleaned it up a little bit, wanted to sell, what, what could you expect for it to bring? If, I, if I cleaned it up, maybe, yeah. maybe we blued it and uh, got all the rust off of it and got it, uh, the barrel working properly, then yeah, I probably could get four, four or $500 out of it. Yeah, yeah. Now, Squib, why don't you chime in on this? When people need to understand, if they go out and spend that kind of money on an SKS, they're not getting you're not getting a you're not getting a Mercedes. You're getting a '83 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme four door, right? <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Do you yeah. remember when Cadillac tried to change their image that um, it's not some crotchety old man's car anymore? It's now it's it's hip, it's fast, it's sporty, it's that the S T S C T S the T S. But every I don't care how many. How how you make that it was, look, or how fast you make it, or, or you know whatever you do to it to make it hip and trendy, it's still an old man's car to me. When I look at an SKS, I look at a seventy-five dollar crappy imported gun that falls apart. That's what I see when I see an SKS. So, even though they're more expensive today, they're more popular today. They're more popular today because they're just it, there's a demand. I remember a time where I mean people think Mosins used to be cheap. Mosin's used to cost more than SKS rifle. I mean, uh, it's just, yeah, I've had three of them. Uh, I got rid of them. I'm not a big SKS fan. I, I understand for somebody who couldn't even own a gun back when I bought my first gun, which was an SKS. Uh, and, and the reason I, I, I bought because it was 74 freaking dollars. And back then I didn't have a lot of money. I was younger and you know, all that. And it, and for a first gun, you know, I didn't give up on it. I kept trying to to get the thing to work better and all that. But um, and the ammo was cheap, three dollars a box for yeah. for twenty rounds of Russian hollow point all day long. And I mean, you just couldn't beat it. And and companies started coming out with uh, aftermarket accessories for them in the nineties. I mean. But, uh, yeah, at a certain point, I just I became done with them. Now, if I still had those three SKS rifles today, they'd be worth a lot more money. And I might uh, save them. I might have, you know, be holding on to them to give to my kids because they'd probably think, oh, Dad, these are cool. We want them. But, um, yeah. yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the minority yet again in this one just because, yeah, I just – Well, eh. you know, there's a lot for, – for decades and decades, you know, the, the surplus rifles just – didn't really do anything in price, and there wasn't there wasn't something like YouTube to create a fan base for a lot of these guns. I know a lot of people went out and bought Mosin Nagants after they were featured on Nun Fancy's channel, and they were featured on uh, Iraqi Veteran. You can disagree with me, but those videos have millions of views, and I guarantee you, that's what sparked an interest for me getting a Mosin. I'm like, hey, hundred twenty seven dollars for something I could hunt with, something that's got some yeah, some kind and of, that was it. Of battle, you know, that's cool, man. I thought it was kind of great back before all these people just started jumping into the gun thing because they were either i don't know suddenly developed an interest or or i think it was more the fear that they were just going to ban guns altogether that yeah. got people jumping in and there was a time where you could buy a lot of guns especially mill serps or imports for a really affordable price or a just cheap if you want to say it like that yeah, yeah. just to get you into guns and i know they, there's still guns today that you can get that are cheap or affordable to get you into guns but um, the SKS had that cool factor because it was a military rifle, uh, even though the, uh, you know, they had lots of civilian imports, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. but I mean, overall it's the same, it's the same gun really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
and and you know when they had uh, i didn't have the detachable mag version so i had to get that that mag that sort of detached and you know i put the put the dragon off stock on it and i had both kinds of bayonets and you know i whatever i mean we even um it came with a, a messed up sling we we uh we modified the sling in our flight equipment shop and uh i made it work and i mean just I would say um, I don't know today because of the price that it's a good entry level gun, but for me at the time it it was an entry level gun. Yeah, and, and like I said, it's just amazing at how much the prices on these things have escalated. But as supplies dry up, and then you know what I'm noticing, especially I'll blame Classic Firearms for this, is that they'll they'll dry up and you won't see a lot of them out there, say in just a lot of the online retailers, and then they'll get a batch in, but then they'll be setting the higher price point. You know, now it's the four hundred dollar gun, like. With the Mosins, they'll get a couple crates of Mosins in and they will like start at 300, whereas they used to be 150, 175, 125. So if you've got a mill serve anything, hold on to it because it, I can I can almost guarantee you it's going to go up in price unless it's so beat up, nobody would want it. But even then, somebody might want it for the parts. Yeah, they might want it for the parts. Yeah, I mean, I got my Garand for, I think, 450 bucks. You no, can't touch them for that today. And, oh, and no. nobody saw no. that coming. No, yeah, but because yeah. for the longest time, you could get $500 Garands I mean, from the CMP or at the gun show or, yeah. you know, and a, it seems like ARs and AKs go up and down and up and down with the panic buys and that sort of thing. I don't know that the SKS is really that it's a panic buy weapon as much as uh, nowadays it seems to be an investment. Right, Travis? Oh, definitely, man. I mean, if, if you want one, you're going to spend top dollar. But I mean, they're either going to peak. They're either going to peak at that price or just continue to rise, especially. And again, is uh, as you see, regulations and stuff increase too. I mean, that, that was, the nice thing about that is a lot of those Milser rifles can bypass a lot of those firearms regulations because they're older tech or they're low capacity or whatnot. Um, question for Calaveras and Kingpin. Calaveras, you can get SKS rifles, right? I believe we can. I've never really looked because they've just never piqued my interest. Okay. I was pretty sure that the SKS was California compliant. So I, I think it would just naturally, I think it always, I don't know about the bayonet that might not have an effect on it, but Kingpin, if you get a chance, I know you said you're, yeah, you're driving right now for work. Let me know. If I remember yeah. correctly, yeah, California is a no bayonet lug state. Um, okay. And how many rounds does the SKS hold when it's got a standard magazine in it? 10. It's a 10 round Ten. fixed magazine. Okay. So yeah, then it might actually be legal. I'm not sure. Yeah, if you get a neutered one. Yeah, and, Probably. And you know, you know, it's kind of interesting. You got the ten round fixed magazine that you can um, you can kind of um, fold downward to access it for cleaning. You can feed it with stripper clips. It keeps a cleaning kit in the in the butt stock. The bayonet folds. You know, if you if you could have a bayonet, it's got sling attachments. You can change out the wooden stock with a synthetic if you don't like the, the wood stock. But the wood stock is – I can't believe I'm selling this thing up as much as I don't like them. <laughs> I, mean, in, I mean, in general, it's got a lot of features that would make it a good um, – both a range rifle and a hunting rifle. You know, um, if you're just – I mean – I shot my first deer with one. Now, with that, though, if you drill and tap it for a scope mount, do you ruin the value on it? I don't I know. Think, a scope would have been a lot nicer to have when I shot my first deer, but it's iron sighted. Sporter, like 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 non sporter, like somebody who sporterizes their rifle, I tend to see them having lower prices overall to a point uh, versus leaving it untouched. So uh, the problem with with a scope on an SKS, the way it's designed, is you either have to come up with a shell deflector that actually will still. Mm. deflect the shell clear of the bolt so that it doesn't jam up or stovepipe or anything. Yeah. Or you have to mount your scope uh, further forward and make it a scout rifle. A scout rifle. I was thinking that's about the only option. Because I, th I think I've seen, do they make dust covers that have pick rails welded onto them for the SKS? They do. They do that for the SKS and the AK. Yeah, I've seen them for the I AK. I suppose if you got like a little yeah. shorty fixed power scope. Yeah, yeah, that might work, or a or a red dot or something. But honestly, I mean, the ballistics on a seven six two by thirty nine, it's it's not like you're going to take this thing out to well, three four hundred yards usually on you, a deer. If actually, you're deer on this right here, this is the Hornady SST. This stuff will drop a deer out to two hundred yards. So this is what you want to run if you're going to do it. Actually, Sand Hills, if you're using an SKS, you'll you'll be able to get you know through you know maybe maybe four hundred yards, but Ooh, you'll be able to the rear sight. 
That's yes, he graduated convenient. all the way up to a thousand. So. The, the, the SK, the SKS, yes. The AK, <laughs> no, because the SKS actually has more, has better accuracy than the AK overall. Well, it's got a longer barrel, hasn't it? Yeah. Mm, it does it depend? Some of them are sixteen or sixteen inch or eighteen inch. Yeah, is it eighteen inch on the SKS normally? I, I think so. Yeah. Okay, so Southpaw has a question. He goes, "This may have been addressed. SKSs that accept AK mags versus an AK forty seven. Would you get the SKS if AKs were hard to find in your area?" Or hold out for an AK. So let's just say you're in a restricted state where you cannot get an AK-47. Uh, would you get an SKF or one that accepts the AK-47 mags? I just happen to have one of those SKS rifles with me right now. So this is the neutered 93, 1993 Norinco Sporter with the uh, butthole stock, thumbhole stock. Uh, this one does not have the bayonet lug. It does have a 16-inch barrel. And it is from the factory design to take AK-47 yeah. mags. Yeah. I I got I got to make a, a a note here for yeah, everyone. Yeah. Back back during the the ninety four assault ban, uh, we couldn't get AKs. So SKSs with the magazines were the only Wait, what thing do you mean we could we couldn't get. get AKs. They weren't That's importing new. them into the country. I uh, dude, every time I went to the gun show in the nineties, there were AKs all over the place <laughs> during the assault ban. Yes. Yes, it's just like the people say you couldn't get the fifteen round magazines, dude. They were there. They were, and <laughs> being imported, you could get with what was available locally, right? Yeah, and they weren't even overpriced back then. They, they, you know what was getting price gouged? AR fifteens. AR fifteens got price gouged after the 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 ninety four ban, but I never had seen a shortage of anything. I never seen. I mean. Well, yeah, I get. I get. I guess Michigan is just in that bubble where there's never a shortage. Well, we are a pro gun state here. Yeah, you know um, the other thing. Okay, now when we're talking about this, we're asking questions about this too. Travis, um, it seems like you're having problems with that. Well, message. I'm trying to manipulate it and sit at my desk at the same time. It's kind of hard to do, but anyway, uh, with this one, you know, if you could get this in your state, if you can't get an AK-47, do the problem with these is that they're very, they're getting very, very expensive. I was looking these up on. Gun broker and they're they're going for between about about seven hundred and eight hundred nine hundred dollars right now, so they are getting a little bit pricey. But uh, you know if that's an option for you, I would say definitely go for it. So yeah. So anyway, to answer Southpaw's question, now the other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, again my favorite rifle. I want to show it off. My favorite bolt action is the Ruger Ranch, chambered in seven sixty two by thirty nine. So I mean the thing is by having the SKS and the AK. And the Ruger Ranch, uh, you're able to stick, stick with the same caliber. Now, this one does take the mini 30 rounds, or just take the mini 30 magazine. And with you getting into reloading, I think you're really going to appreciate the fact that you've got the three rifles in the same caliber because, yeah, I mean, you know, now your reload dies, you're reloading for three or your guns. Yeah, from, an, from a cost standpoint, it's very effective. It's, and it'd be no different than having, say, you know, two twenty three five five six. You know, bolt action versus your 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 uh, AK. So nice strike is showing off. Is that's an it's an AMD sixty three receiver, right? Nice strike. It's yeah. Okay. But 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 for everyone that watched Travis's P, Travis P eleven's video, this is the dreaded magazine that he dremeled and dremeled and dremeled. He did like what four videos on it. Yeah, I could not get it to go there. See, I just had to. <laughs> See rock. that, Travis? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that nice strike. I saw that. <laughs> there you go. There you go, buddy. Just for you. Uh, th th this was your mag. You see that back? That was your mag. That's my Dremel works there. That's what it was is that no matter no matter how much I cut off that that magazine, I could not get it to lock the paddle on the uh, on my AMD sixty three. But again, when I was watching AK forty seven operators union, he had the same problems with those mags in a Wasser or in an Arsenal. It wouldn't take them, but yours does. So now that's the uh, that's the Foos gun. Is that right? This is the Foos gun. This is the Childers receiver. The which, Childers receivers are the only thing that I Which use. leads me to believe, Travis, that a lot of the SKSs that, the, the, that the, these other companies are manufacturing may not be making their magazine wells to spec. Because, you know, any, any Millsurp AK should be able to just take the magazine like that. Uh, okay, well, point. There could be some tolerance that could be off a few millimeters. So, yeah. I the mean, only two you locks. couldn't get this in your AK even after Dremeling. I know. It was There's too, too two long. points on the AK magazines. It's the nose and the heel. Yep. So it, it only engages on um, the front trunnion, 
and it only engages on the, obviously the magazine release. So if you have a tr front trunnion that's pushed back a little too far in the receiver and it's, and it's riveted improperly, you'll have a very, very tight, uh, or it just won't lock up at all, uh, magazine. Yeah. Uh, for for AKs, just to show the one off that I got, I've got the James River Armory edition of the uh, AMD 63. So the only difference is that this one came with the uh, Phoenix Technology grip instead, and it also has the little quad rail that came with it from the factory. And I don't know who made the rail. I don't know if it's like an NC Star or whoever, but it came with it. So does have the 16-inch uh, barrel. It did have that massive muzzle brake on the front. It took that off and put a little slant style on there. So yeah. Yeah, and I can I can run I can run P mags in this just fine. I, yeah. It's not an issue. This will take anything except for those Croatian mags, which kind of drives I, me nuts. I so. bought these at my local yeah. shop. Um, apparently, some guy had brought them into him and said that they didn't work in his AK. I took I took these home. Every single one of them locked in. So, yeah. P mags are good to go in my AK. So there you go. All I see is Jonas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I had it. Oh. I had it locked on him. I accidentally had it locked on him. I was fooling around with his AK for a while. So yeah, these are nice. The only bad thing about this is this was about a hundred dollar premium over the regular AMD sixty three, but it did have again, it did have the uh, the front pick rail on it already, so I didn't have to worry about the the little sheet metal handguard on the front of a lot of the AMD sixty threes. So. Yeah, but but Travis, you don't have the Milserp the Milserp uh, you know East German furniture on your your AK. No, no, I don't. But I mean, I don't. I, I could, I could put this. This has got it. This is what. This well, is, I mean, it just goes to show you go chassis or something. Is that what it is? If I look for furniture for this one, yeah. The it just, uh, I don't know. It just goes to show you can customize it to your individual taste, just like uh, an AR-15. So, yep. I mean, granted, it's not as modular and, and all that, but still, it it is uh, kind of. I, I like some of the platforms where you can you can individualize it. This is mine. There are many like it, but this one is not. You know. Um, so yes, we know the marine sniper saying. No, it it's no, it's not a sniper. Oh my, never mind. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so just getting back to the discussion on this. Um, if you're looking in the market for getting yourself an AK-47. I'm going to be honest with you. I would just say if you can get yourself an AMD 63, do because they are great. They're great uh, rifles. Although some guys were complaining because the barrel is 4140, not 4150 uh, steel. Um, but I would, what's that? Is it chrome lined? Uh, not chrome lined, but it is nitride. Okay. If it's nitrided, you don't have to worry about barrel hardness. Uh, okay. Basically, the nitrided in a semi automatic platform is pretty good the hardness it's basically a hardness coating on the inside and outside of the barrel with yeah. nitriding with um chrome lined that'll do you better for a fully automatic fire if you are lucky enough to have a fully automatic ak um so basically nitriding is making the steel absorb um some sort of nitrogen base and it creates like an almost diamond hard coating so that barrel, no matter what the steel is, as long as it's, you know, rated for pressures, then it, it'll be fine if it's nitrided. Um, whereas the only thing with nitrided barrels is don't get them too hot, uh, yeah. which is practically impossible for um, semi-automatic fire. Um, but like mag dump after mag dump after mag dump, uh, fully automatic fire will actually uh, evaporate the um, nitriding. Yeah, um, that was one thing that Mac had said Military Arms Channel actually tested the AMD 63 and said as long as you're not doing consistent mag dumps, you don't really have to worry about barrel life. He goes, you should be good. I don't know if he said 10,000 rounds is what you could expect out of it. I don't know if that's true on 4140 steel. Funny thing is that they don't, I had to ask Classic, what is the steel that you guys use in the barrel? Because they don't have it listed in the uh, specifications on the rifle. But I'm looking it up right now. This one does kind of, here. It, it does come in stock once in a while. Um, but honestly, you know, and taking kind of a cue from the chat out there, I would just say save your money, get yourself a Wasser. I think they're six hundred dollars if you want one. Just go that route. I'm still not sold on other than other than PSAs, Gen two AKs. I like those, and say so you want to go with a Krebs Customs. I don't know if I'd want to buy like a Riley Defense or a Blackheart Firearms AK because they're the same price as a Wasser. I would rather go with you know a former Commie Block or Commie Block Source 
turn I mean, in with as many parts as possible. If you okay. have the tooling, I'm building my AKM, my Romanian AKM, for like 300 bucks. The, the parts kit was 200 bucks on Arms of America. The receiver yeah. was uh, $90, and the barrel was like another 70 Anyway, but how much money did you spend on the tooling in order to assemble it? That's that, why he prefaced it with if you have the tooling. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean that and that's just it. A lot of a lot of viewers do. They they work in machine shops or they have the stuff in their shop or they've been doing a lot of stuff for a long time and they've got a press or they have the gear or they've built other rifles before. So consider building and, your own, getting the parts kit and just doing it yourself. Yeah, definitely, man. And and see, it's not that there weren't backyard mechanic gunsmiths in the past, but AWB created the whole build it from a parts kit thing. During AWB, uh, they started selling AR lower receivers. It really wasn't on the radar before that because there was no, you know, they, they weren't price gouging these AR 15s. It was cheaper to buy a lower receiver and build your own AR than it was to buy one brand new out of the box, especially a neutered one that I, I still can't figure out for the life of me. If you take stuff off of it, why does it cost more? But whatever. Um, and, and I think that's what really built up the popularity for somebody who's getting into guns today. And they're like, Oh yeah, I bought a receiver and built my AR. Well, 30 years ago, people didn't do that. You know, it just, it wasn't a, a thing, but because of the laws at the time, it's now, it, it's, it, it didn't just catch on. It remained popular. I'm kind of glad that it's, it's an option out there with the AKs. It's, it's more work, but you know, like what AWAC's doing, he's, he's, you know, making it to a certain former uh, Warsaw pack country spec, which is kind of, I think that's kind of cool from a historical aspect. Now, let, let's just throw this one out here. This one will end the argument between the AR and the AK. Patrick says, don't buy an AK, make an AR-47. And I know that uh, Bear Creek yeah. Arms makes a $200 uh, 762 by 39 upper that if you swap out and put a better firing pin in it, it will be reliable and it will run. Or you can go through CMMG or well, there's so many companies now that do AR-47s, which is an AR style manual of arms with chambered in 762 by 39. Well, let me tell you this is... Yeah. Uh oh, here we so go. They are 47 things. The magazines are difficult to come by. You know, they're not everywhere. You can buy, you can buy them on Classic Farm. Magazine. They're readily available, dude. You can buy, there's several brands. They're they're out there. You can get them from PSA. You're not going to go get them at your local Walmart. You probably won't find them at your local Cabela's. I know, but I'm just saying in comparison yeah. to yeah. the massive, massive amounts of Warsaw and, magazines, right. you can yeah. get, you yeah. can even get, um, what is it? The AK-101, which is Arsenal, is a 5.56 AK. The magazines for those are more prevalent than the magazines for an AR-47. So it's, to me, it's one way. It's a one-way street. You know, you can't exactly um, make an AR shoot the AK, but you can have an AK to shoot the AR rounds. And it's way more prevalent, and the magazines are definitely more robust. Well, uh, real quick, Sandhills, thanks for joining us. Sandhills has to head off, so thanks for joining us, buddy. Uh, you appreciate being here. So, <laughs> but Ellis has an AR-15 in 7.62 by 39, and I, I, I've shot that before. And that's awesome. It is awesome. Well, and you can use a lot of your existing AR parts, your pistol grip, your stock, your your carry handle, your your furniture. I mean, that's cool. The fact that you can get by on a lot. I mean, if somebody wants to get into it, the fact you get an upper for $200. Uh, Patrick is saying that his AR-47 runs perfectly and C products, defense mags, makes the mags widely available. But again, yeah, you're not going to, and you're going to pay a little bit of a premium, say, versus a P mag or a GI steel mag for an AR-47 mag for your AR-47. Um, but it is an option for somebody that just likes that style. I mean, there's a lot of, you might even, I don't know, I'm assuming you can swap out the charging handle if you want to. Obviously, your bolt carrier group is going to be unique and your uh, barrel you know, there's going to be some parts that you can't carry over with it, but um, that is a nice option. If you don't like the AK design or you think it's too heavy or you want something a little bit more in line with what you have in your gun safe, you know, by all means, go with an AR-47. They usually have complete ones on Classic for $400. So that's kind of the first place I check for prices. But um, One thing I have heard about the AR-47s that someone might want to consider is uh, because they took a 223 diameter bolt and milled out for the uh, 30 caliber you know casing uh -huh. the uh, sides of the bolt are thinner uh -huh. yeah and are uh, 
more prone to cracks and breaks. So if you have one, uh, just you know inspect the bolt regularly. So Sadly says get the AR-47 that takes AK mags. I think that's the CMMG Mutant as an option. Now Calaveras though, you know, certain ones like CMMG or some of the higher end ones, I, I would guess they would probably have a proprietary bolt that's going to be beefed up or reinforced. But if you're just talking like, again, what be, what Bravo or what uh, Bear Creek does is just going to be taking the 5.56 bolt. They're just going to thin it out or bore it out to fit the 30 caliber round. So, yeah, which that's yeah. kind of the... Uh baseline that a lot of people use is because that way it's they're using their uh ar-15 lowers now if you're you know building one based off of a uh ar-10 lower then of course it's built to work off of a 30 caliber case based yeah. yeah. and you won't have that issue but then you're also talking more expensive oh yeah they're what 1500 yeah. 1200 dollars unless you want to build your own and just put it together piece by piece but Right, but that's your uh, even if you build it piece by piece. Oh yeah, you are manufacturer, so it's gonna be more expensive. Your bulk carriage is that direction. Dollars, yeah, yeah. Just, definitely. I was assuming that most people would be going off the AR-15 platform because it's a smaller, lighter platform for an intermediate cartridge. Now, Vanessa, um, yeah. question. okay, so Vanessa says, how many mags does one buy for these AK rifles at one time? You know, it depends. I, you can buy them in bulk. You know, I've seen, what, like 10 packs of steel. It depends on, on, on how much money you have available, Vanessa. Um, I think I bought, like, six P mags or something when I picked up my AMD 63. I just ordered them at the same time because they were on sale. Um, I can just get the cheap, you know, uh, surplus mags. Nice, Rick, what do you do for mags, aside from the ones that I sent you? Do you just do you have, just have a couple of them floating around, or have you bought them I just, in bulk or what? I, I use I use uh, I get those uh, those Magpul mags. Those are working wonderfully. I also yeah. have the, the 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 other the other one. Uh, what's that other company that does them? Uh, does the mm, polymer oh, there's, mags? There's, there's Pro Mag oh, and Tapco. The Tapcos. I've got I've got yeah. a couple of Tapcos couple of as well. Players, yeah. And then I've got I got a couple Millsurp AK mags. So that's normally what I use for my AK. Now Patrick says for the bull carrier group on the Air Forty Seven, he runs he runs the win. And weapons plus rounds through it. And Patrick has chimed in quite a bit on the gun channel side about his build. It's been an interesting journey putting together that AR-47, which is really cool. Um, John Brown Production says we could buy receivers before the band building AR started. Before the band building ARs was part of the reason for the band. Oh, interesting. No, it wasn't. Okay. No, it was. I'm just reading the comment. I didn't know, you know, what he said. Building ARs. He's talking in pre-94. They they might have been available, but nobody was doing that crap then. They yeah. were. AR-15 for four hundred freaking dollars. Nobody and nobody was buying them because they just weren't. It wasn't cool. <laughs> when they banned them, they suddenly became cool. If you haven't noticed, every time somebody proposes one of these laws or they make a restriction, the prices go up, the demand goes up, and everybody starts screaming their head off about wanting one. You know, that's so, how we got the damn ban in the first place. Nobody gives a shit about them. <clears throat> The, the whole thing is you've got one moron that goes out there and commits a crime and it makes ABC news. And suddenly now it's like, Oh, we gotta, we gotta do something. I mean, look at what they do with the, the bump stocks and stuff. Yeah. I mean, what they actually do is they create a demand. They create a hype. It's just like when somebody sees a, a gun in a movie and they go, Oh man, that's cool. I got to have it. it. It's the same, but it's, it's on a more, you know, that's why these SKS rifles cost so much. They they weren't that that. I mean, it's just all day long you could get them cheap and they were plentiful. And it's like, oh yeah, I get one whenever. And then you know uh, they they start having a ban and and people start snatching things up and the price goes up and up and up. And when the price goes up, somebody says, oh man, I better grab it now. But and before it goes up even more, and it just snowballs. And with so many new shooters coming into the, the fold every year. They're not necessarily pro 2A people, but they're new shooters and they want that cool factor. They start, you know, buying this stuff. That's why you see sometimes the prices go up and down because the, the supply starts to dry up. It doesn't mean they're not going to make more. You won't have any, or you can't find it on gun broker. If you're willing to pay the price, you're willing to pay the price. But, um, you know, people say Obama was one of the best gun salesmen ever. And, and that's just it. So was Clinton. Clinton is the one that made the evil black rifle cool again, I guess you could say. So, uh, you know, if you've, if you've been around and, and you've, you've paid attention to some of the stuff that's going on, like what Travis was saying, um, 
you, if you, if it's, if it's affordable today and you can get it, it, it might be worth a lot in the future, or it just, it, you might be, you know, going back and regretting not making your purchase today. If, if you have the means. Hey, um, AWAG, maybe you can help me out with this one real quick. This is the ammo that came with my sporter. Apparently, according to the guy I got the sporter rifle from, he said that, that every sporter that was imported came with ammunition, uh, like 100 or 200 rounds. This is the ammo that came with it. You know anything about this ammo at all? This It's it's a Norinco rifle, so Norinco made the ammo. Okay. Um, so it looks like it's got a little bit of a red seal around it right it's here. Probably, but... It's probably Chinese military ammo um, if it has seals. Then um, other than that, I'd just say shoot it. You know, you think it's corrosive though. It's most likely corrosive. It says thirty one ninety two on the back. I wonder if ninety two is a year of production. The rifle was made ninety three, so yeah, it's definitely saying Chinese ammo, probably steel core. Yeah, always assume the worst. That way, you're not disappointed if you're not. I don't even know if I want to shoot it. I've got plenty of other new fresh ammo to run through it. So, and he gave me a bunch of. Uh, here's, the, here's the thing um, with corrosive ammo. What people don't understand is it's not going to eat through your rifle in a week. No, you just got to clean out the receiver when you're done shooting it and the bolt. Yeah. I've ran through, like, I actually uh, got past 1,500 rounds on my uh, M72 RPK. And I've ran corrosive through that, and I I still haven't cleaned it. And, you know, it's it's fine. Yeah. Now, granted, it's got a chrome line bore, but other than that, all you yeah. have to do is uh, run hot water through it. Do not use ammonia because, actually, it, it will accelerate the corrosion. Can you just wipe out the receiver with some CLP and just kind of yeah. scrub, run yeah, over? Be I mean, that's all you have to do. Like, obviously, they weren't just running garden hoses down their Mosins in the battlefield back in the day when they were, you know. Yeah. And also, I, down I, in the battlefield back in the day, they don't care because when they got done with their, their rifle, they took it to an armorer and the armorer would clean it. Now, I find this very hard to believe, but I've heard people say that they've taken their Mosin into the range and they fired Kuros of Amro through, and when they came home, it already had pitting in it. I find okay, that that's 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 crap. That is there's no way crap. it can be that caustic in that. There must have been something seriously wrong with the ammo. It's not even the but it's not even the powders, the primers, right? Yeah, the it's the, the primers, primers that create the corrosive salt. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's salt. It is essentially salt. So with warm water, it will run it right out. Well, what they're not saying is it had pits in it when they took it. Yeah, well, I'm kind of curious how well they cleaned it out before. Did they actually take it apart and get all the cosmoline off of it and? And, you know, it could just be residue. They might think it could just also be brass shavings or steel case shavings in the receiver. And um, Hey, real quick, uh, Gizzard Gary's joining us. Gizzard Gary, how you doing? We're having a lively AK chat today. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. I don't know a whole lot about AKs, except I know how to spell it. Now, now Gary, I don't know if you heard me talking earlier, but we're going to be moving to Lincoln. My wife's actually moving in four weeks, and I'll be moving in a year. So I'll be going really? to Lincoln quite a bit on the weekend, so I will be close to you. Not that I'm trying to stalk you, but I'll be closer than I was before, Gary. Oh, that's great. Maybe we get together. <laughs> that's, I think I'll be probably more like maybe two hours north at that point instead of seven or eight. So yeah, do some shit together, man. It's going to be off to kind of relocate a little bit, a few resources, but uh, just give you a little Beware of the Travi. That's right. The Travi is migrating east. <laughs> I know. Uh, All right. Great, moving. Yeah, if you guys are joining in late, my wife got her dream job. I'm not going to say what it's in, but it is, it is her dream job. She's been trying to get it for many years, and... Uh, she didn't want to turn up the opportunity, and and me, I mean, I I love the school that I'm at. I mean, I, there are other schools out there I can teach at, so obviously it's not going to be, you know, it's not the end of the world for me. But uh, for her, it's it's harder for her to get into her field with what she wants to do. So local says, is Travis using the headset mic? Yeah, is my audio bad or not? Is it really muffled, guys? Sound good to me. I can. It's yeah, I'm settled. I'll check my audio settings real quick here while you guys chat. But um, uh, what this sounds like to me. With her moving, you know, uh, months before you, sounds like vacation for her. Oh man! Well, you know what? She had two years of vacation because that's what we did before we got uh, uh, before we got married. So I was pretty much going to Lincoln every weekend, or she was coming here every weekend. So yeah, she'll get she'll be busy with her job and stuff, and then I'll be heading out, and she'll be coming out here quite a bit too to spend time with the animals because we got to figure out how it's going to work with the pets. But Vanessa says, "Is Lincoln becoming anti-gun like other cities?" It is the liberal part of Nebraska, Lincoln, and Omaha. They did push through a bump stock ban on a whim uh, one random week at a city council meeting in Lincoln. Um, Frank says, back to the bachelor life for you. Yeah, Frank, I'll be bachelor in it, moving furniture is what I'm going to do. If any of you guys want to move in and help me do that, that'd be great. Um, Snake, Snake Doctor says, audio is not as loud as it used to be. Okay, I may need to look into uh, boosting my volume if possible, or, or I think I can turn it up a little bit. Let me turn up my audio a little bit for you guys. All right, so that's going to boost me up quite a bit. Do you guys notice the difference now? Is that all right? Is that any better at all or, or not? 
Anybody out there in the chat? You guys feel free to chime in and let me know. So yeah, uh, sometimes yeah, they just have a hangout just has a crappy audio connection, so there isn't much I can do about it, unfortunately. But uh, okay, Taco says you sound fine. So again, the ARs and the AKs, and there's so many different options out there. If you're gonna get an AK, my you recommendation can fix like by doing that. All right. So anyway, um, yeah. So if you're going to get yourself an AK, I would say if you're in a state where you can get one, uh, go ahead and get yourself a, a Wasser. Um, otherwise, an SKS is going up in price. If you can get one for 375, I'd say get one. Uh, so real quick, uh, David, we were asking you a question, Kingpin. Can you get SKS rifles in Maryland? Uh, Kingpin, if you can chime in, let us know. Yeah. There's certain ones that you can, and there's certain ones you can't. We have the... Uh approval list here that goes as far as rifles and handguns so just a tip if you live in maryland and you're going to buy a gun make sure that you look it up on the uh, police website first i wonder if mine would be on the list my sporter because it doesn't have a bayonet lug and it has the thumbhole stock but it takes the detachable ak mags that was kind of funny that that made it in on a loophole and you know or on an, an exception well they've got they've got their weird little if you've got a flash hider, then you can't have a collapsible stock. And if you've got a collapsible stock, you can't have a pistol grip. It's, it's exactly one of the deals where you can't have all three. You can have two of them, but you can't have all three. And yeah. they all have to come with a heavy barrel. So if it doesn't have a heavy barrel, it's not coming here anyway. Now, there is a big push. I'm seeing this. Man, uh, Sketchy Roll keeps saying, if you want an AK, just get a VZ-58. I love them, but, man, they are going up in price. So VZ-58s used to be cheap. Just a couple of years ago, they used to sell them with, like, like eight magazine packages, and you could get them for four ninety nine or you know five fifty. But the VZ fifty eight is an awesome the, gun. The, the bad thing about the VZ fifty eight or the mags, proprietary mags. But you can yeah, always, you, you they're, can they're get, not an AK get. proper though, right? It's 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 uh, AK. Uh, yeah, it has a bolt carrier. It almost looks like an SKS meets an AK style receiver and, and bolt action group, bolt carrier group. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying anything bad about uh, the the rifle. I'm just saying it's AK esque. It's AK like. It's AK ish. Yeah. Yeah. But not quite AK. There, there are plenty of rifles out there that look like other rifles, but on the inside, something's different, or it, it's different enough. Not enough things are interchangeable. So, but I mean, is if it functions the same, if it if it delivers the same sort of performance if that's what you want to call it with an ak yeah. uh yeah, yeah uh okay so let's go ahead and, and move on hopefully we covered that in depth i don't see the, the ak platform going anywhere anytime soon all i will say is ak prices have now surpassed surpassed the uh ar prices and that wasn't always the situation you know five years ago um so if you want an ak i'd say jump on one and get one i'd recommend a loss 10 amd 63 obviously if you want to go arsenal or go you know higher end krebs do it man have fun with it um, PSA second gen AK 47 seem to be promising. Um, again, I'm still not sold on some of the other, some of the other companies that are out there, but like Riley defense, Blackheart arms, maybe we'll hear good things about so, them so in the future. The, too, the, the so. PSA the yeah. promising. I w I still wouldn't go there yet because okay. they're not, they haven't been on the market enough. Like I have a, um, Oh geez. The ones that, um, that bought out Waffen works and that, um, PSA in up buying i have one of theirs and my hammer ddi yeah ddi my hammer beats the living shit out of my bolt carrier to where it's pitted like crazy i'm sitting there i'm having to take metal off my hammer my uh yeah my hammer in order to make it softer than my bolt carrier you know um, little, little stuff like that that you know they you know these parts start going through oh this is a real hardening process well you take you're taking it and out of spec let a rifle let a company be on the market for multiple years before you do it yeah yeah wasser arsenals you're good no i don't want to i don't want to anger anybody because i know a lot of guys bought these but the ras 47s and the c39 v2 i've seen enough complaints about them and seen enough evidence of worn trunnions around the 5,000 round mark or less that i would steer clear i did have a ras 47 I didn't even know that there were problems with it. Robski had released his video shortly before I bought mine. And I bought it because it was an American made AK. It looked awesome. The price was right. I think I got it for like four fifty. And now they're now they're going up in price too. And I loved it. But then people are like, Oh, that's that thing's a piece of crap. It's it's got a cast trunnion and, and this and that. And I really only put a couple hundred rounds through before yeah. I sold it. Yeah. The, the thing about the C thirty nine V two is 
while it's got a forged receiver instead of a you know a folded uh, receiver, that's good. But you're right about the Trunnions. So, I mean, if you have a gunsmith replace the Trunnions with decent Trunnions on the C39 V2, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, 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 that's the only weak point of, of, of that rifle is it, it's just the Trunnion because it's got a cat, it's got a forged receiver, so it's good. When, I mean, when I see multiple videos reviewing these some of these rifles, and if I see one company and one rifle that's failed, say, a no-go gauge test, a proper no-go or, you know, field right. test, it really makes me wonder if it's something I want to buy. So just use caution when you buy those guns. I'm not saying don't, but, uh, you know, maybe. And I, I don't know. I think the Century AKs only have a one-year warranty on them also. So oh. if it wears out two years down the road and it closes on a no-go gauge, you're SOL, you know. Well, well if Foose gets his Type 7, he, you can always buy an AK from Foose. There we go. Oh, I'm still, I still want to buy a Makarov. <laughs> I mean, all I have is this little beautiful little colorful silhouette that sits above my head to remind me. So, um, All right, so we're going to move on to our next topic. So so bore siding, bore siding. Uh, do you guys do any kind of bore siding at all? If you do, what do you do? I know there are some shops like Cabela's that will do free bore siding for you. You guys just go ahead and share if you do any kind of rifle siding. Have you ever done a bore side at all where the you either use first? a laser? Yeah. The first thing I ever bore sighted was uh, an M197 three barrel 20 millimeter Gatling gun. That Does works. That yeah, that works. So, how'd you do it? We used something called Sabi Gear, S A B E, side alignment bore sighting equipment. It's a bunch of equipment that comes in big yellow boxes. It's pretty expensive. So, <laughs> one air group shares the, the equipment. I mean, we literally had to wait for them to fly it over from the other ship that was heading back to America while we were heading over uh, to Europe because we only had the one. It was really kind of cool. weird. So but, let's um, keep it if on. you've ever seen somebody put a car on an alignment rack where they yeah. got the little lasers and they line up the wheel, that's what you do when you uh, – what you're doing is you're making sure that the the helmets, the, the pilot and the gunner both have a, a helmet sighting system. And where you look is where the gun points if you select that mode of operation. They, there's manual modes and there's a fixed mode and there's also – the gun follows your head, follows your right – where your right eye is, is – uh, is going so you've got to make sure and there's a there's a linkage in there and it, it's just like aligning a car <laughs> why couldn't you just do a three-shot group and just adjust the windage and elevation knobs um we'd have to do a 16 shot group because there's a detent on the trigger and if oh. you just barely touch it you'll feel that first click and it's 16 plus or minus four rounds i think it'll do a, a short burst uh otherwise the cyclic rate yeah it'd be a little bit I mean, I suppose we could just put three in the feeder and do it. So yeah. <laughs> now let's bring it back to more practical level. How do I bore sight this? <laughs> what, what what do I do? I mean, I know what I do. I just want to see what you guys have to say when it comes to taking so, those first shot. You get it out of the box. You get it cleaned up. You take it to the range. What do you guys do aside from so, doing? I'll tell yeah. you what to do. Uh oh, do it, Tony. Do I'm it, Tony. Line What's it up that? target at about 100 yards away. Yep. And then lock it. And cut the scope. Pretty damn simple. Make sure that the rifle is perfectly vertical. So whenever you set your uh, scope and start moving it, you could all you have to do is make sure that your uh, crosshairs are vertical as well. Vandal says, "Pull the bolt out." So what I what I've what I've seen what I've done before what I start doing on my rifles now is uh, I will the bolt. Uh, I will take it and set it on my lead sled and look down the barrel at my target at 100 yards, which is really hard on my eyes because it's tiny, but I'll try to get the, the bullseye centered in the barrel. And then I will manually adjust the crosshair so that they are on the uh, on the bullseye itself because I physically move the lead sled so it's in alignment with the target. And I will look down the barrel. I'm not sold on some of those laser bore siders. I know a lot of people said, oh, you put that shell in, it's got a, a laser, it projects a dot. Good luck seeing that on a bright day at 100 yards. Um, it might work in lower light conditions, but if you look down the barrel and then just manually adjust your crosshairs, this will get it within the realm. Because before I used to do the three shot group, and sometimes I'd be taking shots and I couldn't tell where the bullets were going. They were hitting somewhere on the backboard. I would go put a poster board up and put a dot on it, shoot at the dot. And we're talking like, you know, two feet by three feet, right? I'd put a poster board up, trying to see where the shots were landing and make my adjustments then. And even then, I had times where it was not working. I really had a hard time bringing in my Mossberg Patriot before I decided to do the typical. The traditional bore siding and that actually worked really well. well so that's now, something you can do. Yeah. Yeah. If you're doing it with the three shot groups, do it start out at like 25 feet. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I rolled my Jeep up. Nobody else was at the range. I rolled my Jeep up and was taking shots off the hood. In fact, Stan pulled up on me behind his pickup truck. He goes, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm just I'm just, just sighting in my rifle. I was thinking I was at 35, 40 yards trying to get it on paper because 6.5 Creedmoor gets expensive when you're trying to sight your rifle in. And I said, oh, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get it sighted. And he's like, oh, okay, because once I got it at 50, then I could take it back to 100, and I was able to make the shots. So I love shooting off the hood of my vehicle. It's just awesome. It's kind of like John Wick. I don't know. I just enjoy that. Yeah, that's where uh, I do to get me on to get me close. I do the same thing you do about you know, uh, pulling the bolt out and then looking down the bore. Yeah. A smaller yeah. bore rifle that's actually more effective. The You start getting 30 caliber and up. It starts getting a little more sloppy. But that's where if you're doing it on a six five or a two two three or something like that because their bores are smaller, it's going to be a little, a little tighter when you do it. But it's still, it, yeah. I mean, it'll get you at fifty yards. It'll get you on a three foot target. So that way, then you can walk it in. But yeah, it's definitely not going to be a scientific way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. At least it'll get you within the realm. So that you can make quick adjust, go go down and measure, make your make your MOA adjustments, and you're basically good to go. Um, you really have to have a mount that you can lock the gun with, though. Yeah, yeah. I that's why I yeah my uh, I, I try not to shoot it with the front strap down on the barrel, but my my lead sled does have a uh, strap that I can use to keep the front end secured into place. I don't like to take shots with it, but if I want to just get it steady, and then after that I can slowly take the uh, the strap off the front and then fire. And take a few shots, but that does help a lot. That does make it easier. It'll save you a lot of ammunition, especially if you're shooting an expensive cartridge or you know something that's got, that's running you say a buck around. Now again, it's hard for me to do the 25 yard shots on the 100 yard range because there's no place between zero and 100 where I can set up. And then I can go. I have to go over to the other uh, short range. They have a 100 yard range you can go to. I've got two of them I can choose from, and then from there I can set up targets at 25 yards. But I just like I usually would just put up a huge piece of paper and shoot at it, and that's. From there, I can make my adjustments pretty quickly. But if you're not even connecting on paper, you're just wasting ammo. So, and I don't know. A lot of you guys might not be able to set up a target at 25 yards because your your range is zero to 100. There's nothing in between because that's that's the firing line. So you might not be able to do that. Squib, do you guys have that at your range? Do you have a like is anything in between zero and 100 where you could set up? Between zero and 100, if you don't don't have anything to set up, that's when you take your jeep down range. That's what I did. That's <laughs> that's what I do. Nobody else was there, so I'm like, I'll throw the bipod on and have some fun. So. Um, there's some you might have highly regulated ranges where that's a no, no, that's never going to happen. And I wouldn't do that if there had been anybody else on the range shooting. Obviously, I'm not going to do that. There was nobody there. I go, out, I go out at the range at stupid times when it's like 10 degrees above zero. So Either that or you bring a stick that you can put a target at 25 yards down from the shooting yeah. station. Well, I just discovered a range does have some small stands you can set up, and I had no idea. I can put targets on it and uh, set it up at that point. So. Um, so that's an option. So that's what bore sighting is essentially. I, I'm sure there's some higher end precision laser dot kits you can buy, but I wouldn't buy any of the cheap Chinese ones you buy off Amazon for 10 bucks that have a laser. It's basically a laser pointer in a shell that's designed to fit in your bore. And I, I just read, you usually see the reviews on those things and they're not very promising. Like well, it's, you know, that, that, and a lot of those that you get off Amazon stuff like that. If you actually look at them, you could move the red dot. It's not, those aren't, they're bore sided, yeah, <coughs> but they're not straight coming out of the box. So you put it into your barrel, and the laser sight the first time may not even exit your barrel. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't even bother going that route. I wouldn't even, no, just just, just do it the right way. Just look down the bore and just go that way if you want to. So that'll definitely take care of you. So it's. Um, let's see real quick here. Anything else on bore siding guys? Anything else that works? You know, obviously take some sandbags. The, the yeah. thing is, is you, you don't even the bore side. You don't even need to be at the range. Stay, st go in your house. Dark in your house. So people can't see in your house. Oh yeah. And yeah, yeah. empty it. Make sure it's clear. Stick it out. Uh, look out the window and something at about a hundred yards or wherever and bore side it that way. It's, yeah. it's the same thing. You don't even have to take it to your, to the range. Wow. And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna lie and say I've never done that before. <laughs> yeah, I was just doing I that yesterday have. from two two three. You've had it sitting up on your kitchen table. If you're you know if your bolt's out you're and it's dark, you're not you're just you're just sliding it in. You know, you're not doing anything oh. nefarious. So yeah. I mean it was light yeah. in my house. I had the window open. I was sighting at a treetop, you know, uh you know, a block and a half away, you know, uh from an you know out the back window of my house. 
There's no one going to see me. No one going to freak out over it. On guns that don't have the ability to remove the bolt, like some semi-autos and that, you just have to do the up close on paper, get it in the ballpark, and keep moving away. What semi-autos you can't you? You cannot. Remove? Wilmington 740, 742, 7400, 7600. Okay. Yeah, he's got a point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so that's basically the basics behind bore siding. So now the last thing I want to talk about, and this is, I mean, I, you know, this is kind of, you might have your own feelings on this. Have you guys ever had, again, with all the, the red flag laws and stuff coming out and going on, it, it's my feeling that it we don't need all these excess laws or laws in general that say that you are no longer fit to have a firearm other than the whole, what do you call it, educated, educated in the court as somebody who mentally cannot have a firearm. The red flag laws, I think, make it too easy for somebody to lose their farm. Even in Nebraska, the laws they're proposing say it would make it, I don't believe a felony, but a misdemeanor. I could be wrong on this. But if you do a false red flag law, like you just did it because you were mad at somebody, not because you truly thought they were a danger. Like if they do an investigation, there was nothing wrong with you. And then they come back on you and say, why'd you, why'd you file this paperwork on this person? Well, we just broke up. You know, uh, That's the problem I have with the red flag laws is that it makes it way too easy. Me being a teacher, I'm like, wow. I mean, I got a kid that gets a zero. What's going to stop him from making a phone call because they know that I've got that I'm a hunter, right? So that, that's the problem with red flag laws. There, yeah. There's no, there's no punishment for people who lie and waste the government's time. There, there is, but then it's going to be no, no, no. Legal. There, there isn't. There isn't. It's a slap on the wrist. Well, okay, you can call it that, but in Nebraska, you can get it's. See, I don't believe it's a felony, but I believe it's like a higher class misdemeanor you would get. And in the meantime, your guns are gone. You got to do the. The legwork and the cost of trying to get them back and the delay of not having the guns in the home. Uh, in Maryland, there's no penalty whatsoever for a false flat, false red flag report. There you go. There you I go. That there should be no such damn thing. It should be the yep. point where, like a felon, if you're not safe to have a gun, you shouldn't be safe to be walking the fucking street. Right? You know, and so so let's talk about it, though. At what point do you feel like it is your duty to intervene in family uh, when it comes to taking away the firearms? At what point would you guys step up and say, OK, this doesn't need to be in the house anymore? Or do you? What do you guys think? I've never been there. I mean, if you've got a family member that's going into Alzheimer's or they're forgetting things or they're thinking there's somebody else. Is that the point when you'd want to step in and take away the firearms? Or well, if their mind's gone, I just yeah. take the ones and they won't ever know it. No, that's just it. See, that's that's what I'm thinking. Is it, to me, it should be more of the responsibility of the friends and the family. We've already got. If you're if you're harassing somebody with a firearm, you know, I think it's good enough for somebody to call the police and come come talk to you and say, "Hey, are, are you guys having problems? Is there problems?" Not just walk right in and throw them out and take your guns. I mean, just because people disagree over stuff all the time, and then. You you see you know we've seen some of the videos before where where somebody gets pulled over by the cops like that NRA video and the guy gets arrested well he was cut off by somebody who was being an aggressive driver but that person called the cops first so now he's the one that gets he's the one that gets arrested just off of word of mouth right yeah that's for uh, my grandfather we had to take his when he his Alzheimer's started getting bad yeah it was one of those you know during one of you know we pulled him out of the house uh, well we pulled the firearms out of the house when he was not in the house you know and then on one of his more lucid days we sat him down and explained what we had you know uh, we had done but that's real okay and, and it, it we didn't tell him where exactly we told him, you know they are with family that's yeah. where, uh do you trust us to take care of them for you and that's where because being on one of his more lucid days he like Okay, yeah, I mean, I'll trust you guys saying because it's it's with family and it's nearby. Okay, I'll deal with that. But yeah, that's where we didn't want to do it until you know he was having more off days than he was good days. Yeah, the big thing with these red flag laws is they're punishing you for a crime that you ain't yet committed. Yeah, they're taking they're seizing your property. And they're basically accusing you of doing something that that you have not been proven that you have done. And that's what really bothers me about it. And what drives me nuts is they keep going back to, well, this shooting wouldn't have happened if this kid didn't have access to this gun. Well, for starters, many of those people get the guns by stealing them or a family member buys them for them. And maybe the family member should have done that. Um, I'm thinking about the, uh, the, the Florida shooter. Okay. And then they say, well, the red flag laws could have stopped that. Would they really? I mean, I see that being as a complete breakdown of society. The fact that 
friends didn't intervene to help or the police weren't able to do it or and if the guy was going to do something he would have found a gun anyway don't tell me all of florida he could have found himself a firearm look that at, he could have used to do the crime that he did the red flag laws would have stopped nothing look at the stats in the south side of chicago there's 700 murders a year there that would not be stopped by any law except having maybe a legally armed citizen <laughs> to defend their life you know from being mugged or shot or robbed or or uh, home invasion or whatnot um, but yeah, you're going to have gun crime, whether you have red flag laws or not. And just, again, the, the, what really bothers me is the fact that it isn't a more severe penalty for those that file a false flag. Somebody in the chat just said, make it five years imprisonment for filing a false statement just because of the bind you put the system in and the cost and the trauma of somebody having their property taken from them. It needs to be more than like you said, nice, right? There is no, there's no real punishment for it. A little $200 misdemeanor. That that's not going to be anything worse. That, that, that's before, nothing compared you know? to someone losing their their self their, their their only way of self defense. This is true, and like David said, in Maryland there is no there is no recourse for somebody that files it. So you know that really bothers me. And the fact that Nebraska is trying to tack it on there and say, oh, it's going to be a misdemeanor if you do it. Uh, somebody who's upset with somebody isn't going to care. They're not going to be thinking about that. They're going to be like, I want that person's guns gone. They made me mad. Or this person broke up with me. Or this guy cheated on me. Or I hate this person. Or here's my neighbor. He actually mowed over into my side of the yard. I'm calling the cops because he's dangerous. Well, you know, and all they got to do is fabricate some story that you brandished well, a firearm. And then it's up to you to prove you're innocent. The thing Any is, good lawyer will be able to walk into court and say, my client felt in fear at that time. Now, did the did it turn out that Travis isn't a mass murderer that's kicking puppies every day? Yeah, it turned out that it was not true. But I felt that way at the time. No one's ever going to get prosecuted for filing a false red flag. It's not going to happen. Well, if they have to get a lawyer, that's going to cost more than a damn fine. That's just it. Or it could cost more than your guns to get your guns back, you know? But, you know, yeah. think that there's plenty of crooked lawyers out there that'll take these cases pro bono. Maryland's yeah. full of lawyers that are dying to take your guns away from you, and they'd be happy to take those cases. And that's true. I think in a lot of states, they won't punish people for false, you know, just like they won't punish a lot of people for the false uh, rape, you know, uh, because you know, that's real, how a lot of the, you know, you know, people on that side will explain it is they don't want to scare off the people who have a legitimate claim. So they don't want to punish the people who made false claims, you know, uh, in fear that someone who should be making the claim won't. Well, that does sound like California's thinking. No, it wasn't just California that I heard saying that. The thing that this is going to do is convince people to go out and get guns under the table so they can have a couple hidden away. Yeah. But then what's the punishment if you lie and they find out, you know? <laughs> But at least you've got something, right? Uh, now, here's the point that was being made is, you know, these these red flag laws were for child protection. But again, Scott says, you know, they could always could petition the court to have somebody. They could always say something about your child where your child has this issue or that issue. Therefore, you should not have guns in the home, even though you could easily keep them locked up in a safe where that child would never have access to them. So, I mean, to sit there and say, oh, well, we're going to take it away because your kid, you know, threatened some kid at school. Yeah, there was the one with the two kids that said, didn't somebody say they were going to go get their dad's guns and shoot up the school. So therefore they came in and took that guy's guns out of his home. Um, even though the guns could have been locked up in a vault, you know, and the kids would have no access to them at all. Um, and unfortunately, you know, the things that have happened, it has happened with kids that have, that have had serious issues and they've had access to the firearms and the firearms weren't locked up or the family member bought that firearm for their kid and their kids on some sort of severe behavioral meds, you know, um, may, I think pay, parents need to be a lot more responsible when it comes to having firearms in the home too. Again, starting at an early age, making that kid understand that that firearms are dangerous tools, they're not toys, is one way to go with it. If you've got a child that has serious issues, you, you may want to keep your firearms locked up. I mean, I, it might not be responsible to have the Glock 17 sitting on the kitchen counter if you've got a child that has severe issues, all right? So people just need to use some common sense. If they did that, we wouldn't have the problems that we're having today. So I don't know. But have you guys ever had, again, have you guys ever had, yeah, what's up? You know, I think common sense has become a superpower in today's society. And it's pretty scary, so I don't know. So otherwise, yeah, it's not like I don't think that there there should be a point that you should take a person's firearms away. I think it needs to be a family decision. It needs to be if you have a friend looking out for you and they are seriously fearing for your safety, they need to talk with you. But I think that 
having law enforcement have the conversation with that person, the conversation with the person is the first step that should be taken, not an automatic swat your home and take your stuff. Because again, the situation that leads to you kick the door in, I'm not expecting anybody. I might be going up there, going up there, guns blazing. How do I know? Okay, I see somebody come in with like tactical armor on. How do I know it's not a home invader? Because people can buy body armor on eBay. You know, I'm probably going to take the first shots because I'm fearing for my life. Boom. And then I'm either arrested or killed. So it's just the panic that it creates. And what it does is very, very detrimental to society. So am I saying that we shouldn't have some way of, of, of educating a person or legally separating a person from their firearms? I'm not going to say no, because I think that there could be a situation where somebody, like we said, somebody is mentally incompetent. If you didn't have a rule to confiscate their firearms, Again, somebody well, who is severely... Travis, Travis you know, there's already laws in place for that. I know, and that's what I'm saying. What we have, nothing new, nothing additional, is fine. You know, if that's... If that's you've got to have... It, it, you know. It's just the problem with it is that we are not enforcing the laws yeah. on the books already. Yeah. And that, that that doesn't apply to just edu educating. That also applies yeah. to criminals as well. They're get, they they're get You know, some states have a catch and release system of which, you know, they don't keep the hardened criminals in jail. They keep the civilians who made one wrong move. They throw the book at them, but the criminals that kill people all the time get off scot free. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty bad situation. So let's uh, let's not let those happen. We definitely need to get active and, and check that out. So. Uh, well, you could look at it like um, at work, at at a professional workplace, where you are you you you've got an issue with an employee or a potential issue with an employee. But that employee might also be liable to sue the company if you if you terminate them and you want to follow your employee handbook and go through, you know, you get the writ, uh, the verbal warning, then you get the written warning, then you get the three days off unpaid, then you get term whatever it is. But you also want to have a file in case you do go to court to say, look, they, they did this on this day. We talked to them about this on this day. We suspended them on this day. We'd, and you build up in sometimes in some cases, it might take you a year or more to have a, a thick enough file with enough stuff in there so that when they do try to sue you or if they do try to sue you, you can stand up against anything they throw at you in court because you've done your due diligence. Well, you could yeah. almost do the same thing with this sort of situation. Sure. I think it should start with the family. The family should, and it's not just with, with uh, if somebody is maybe unsafe to themselves or others and they, they have firearms, it could be a lot of things. There are there are people that are, are um, they, they've got uh, addiction problems. They've, they've, whatever it is. And you, your family should take care before the government takes care of anything. It should be your family, your friends, your work, your church, whatever it is before the government gets involved. It, it, all this it's almost along the same lines as welfare. So I think that if your family talked to you and they still felt that you needed some sort of, uh, what, what's it called? Um, um, not intermission. What's it called? Um, intervention. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Then at that point, yes, they have law and law enforcement interview you. They don't have them search your house. They don't have them ask you what you got. They just have a talk. And maybe for some people that's enough. Maybe going, oh, man, I'm on the radar. Or, oh, man, I didn't realize this was illegal. Or oh, And then from there, maybe there's another step. But it, what you do is you build that case. And after you've, after you've done so much for so long and crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's, at that point, if there's a law that says this person is a danger, we need to either institutionalize them or we need to disarm them, then maybe I could get behind something like that. But if you just you know, one phone call from an anonymous person and you kick the door in. No, I'm not, I'm not behind that at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and as litigious as our society is today, you think that somebody would have looked at it from that standpoint and going, why, how do we, how do we fire somebody at work who's liable to sue us, but there really are a danger to the other employees. Okay. Why can't we just apply that to, you know, Oh, definitely. Uh, we do have a super chat question. Uh, Erstwhile says, what level body armor do you all have? And I've made videos on mine before, so it's no secret. I've got Tactical Scorpion level three. It's AR-500 level three plus body armor. Uh, it is, it, and I've seen tests on it. Mr. Guns and Gear actually shot at it with a 308. It'll take several hits from a 308. I think it can resist one to two rounds of 556 before it penetrates what I saw in the video. 
Um, but uh, that's that's what I have is three A. Do you guys you guys have your body armor at all? Do you guys have anything? Just what God gave me. The only armor that's, you got is your revolver. <laughs> that's yeah. too tactical for me. I have a lot of flat a fat that a, a bullet has to get through. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I bought it because we can. I bought it because it's relatively inexpensive, and you know, I don't know. It's just something to have around. Why not? It's not illegal, and it's relatively inexpensive. Get it? No, I want to get some. I just haven't yet. Is it is it legal for purchase in California? As far as I know. Okay. I don't know if it's banned in any states. It might be banned in certain cities or something. I heard it was in Illinois. What's that? I heard it was banned in Illinois. I have to check. Now I can check on click on the the ad that I purchased. Um, I got. Like a condor vest that's actually designed to be a plate carrier. I think it was like eighty bucks, and then the body armor was like one forty. Yeah, the, there is there is a couple states where it's banned. Check and see. <laughs> I'll have to look. Yeah, I was checking to see if it's not available. Uh, yeah, I don't see that it's not. Okay, usually at the bottom of the ad they tell you if you can't sell it. Um, see, a wags gone, so I was going to ask him and see what he says, but. He's not here, so I'm not seeing that it's not available. We'll have to check and see, but yeah, that's what I have is a three A, um, and that's it's. I think it's decent enough for what for what I, you can add extra trauma plates to it and stuff like that if you want to. So, um, hey, real quick, uh, nice strike. Do you want to lead the discussion on this? I'll post the, the link over in the chat on the patches, the two A patch batch before we go. Oh, oh yeah. Let me let me get the link open. All right. Yeah, we'll go uh, ahead then and I, then I can then we can share yeah. it on page one up. Uh, yeah, uh, G-Webs is uh, G-Webs and a bunch of other creators and uh, and two video sharing platforms are a part of this 2A patch batch of 2019. And basically now they've, they've got a, they've got a, a couple uh, different uh, rewards on the Indiegogo. But cool. if you pay if you pay 50 bucks, you get all 12 patches, all 12. Yeah. That's like that that ends up being like. Four dollars and some change for a patch. That's not bad because patches could be ten to fifteen dollars a piece. I actually just got in on this uh, two days ago. It's at forty nine percent right now, reaching yeah. its goal. Oh, whoa, forty nine percent! It's mm -hmm. like I woke up this morning. It was at forty five. We started caliber corner, and it it jumped to forty eight. We're at forty nine now. If we can get to the uh, the goal, I mean, everybody will get patches, and uh, it'll even it, and there'll even be a few extras for the creators to get, either give away. Uh, used to fund GunTube or used to fund GunStreamer, you know, that could really help out the creators as well. Because it, it actually, it, if you haven't looked at getting patches made, they are ridiculously expensive to get them made for just like a small batch. I looked at it for like a hundred. I was looking at like six hundred dollars. Wasn't can doesn't Alan Anchor do? Do they do? They, they do model patches, don't they? They they do, but G Webs has a has a different. Uh, uh, I, I I think he might have found them through Allen Anchor. That they'll do them, you know, cheaper than you know what, ten dollars a patch. But I again, stickers are about a buck a piece. Is that right? A buck, a buck fifty, or something like that? If you want to get stickers made, I think Allen Anchor does a pretty good price on that. Yeah, I I, I use somebody else, but yeah. again, again, Allen Anchor does a great job on stickers. But uh, check out the two way patch batch if you can. Uh, support it if you can you know share it on social media twitter facebook instagram youtube wh wherever you can share this to your friends your family anybody who might be interested in these patches please share the links out i've been i've been sharing the links left and right trying to get it out there i've done videos on on guntube's uh youtube website uh, youtube's page uh i've done I've actually put the same video on GunTube at the top of GunTube. If you haven't seen that already, it's 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 going to stay there static until the campaign is over. Okay. So, yeah, guys, get in on that. Get your patches now because there's some really neat ones that are there, and they're cool just to stick up. They're fun to put on your hats and your whatever your gear bags and your vests and coats and all that fun stuff. So anymore, they seem yeah. to put those little tactical patches on all the clothing and stuff. Yeah. If we if we don't if we don't get the uh, the GunTube uh, uh, lo a patch. This is gonna be the only gun to patch there is. Oh, <laughs> and, and I'm not getting rid of it. There you go. There you go. That's that's the prototype, huh? That's the prototype that G made, oh, yeah. and his machine, his uh, sewing machine is uh, uh, down for the count. So, hey, do you want to like, trade for a macro? This is one of two. Ah, uh, <laughs> well, this is a patch too. This is. A, well, 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 I, I, I'll tell you what, Travis. You yeah. could stand a gun to patch in maybe FDE. Ooh. I might be willing to trade. 
That would be sweet. That would be yeah. cool. Because uh, I, I, I've got a patch, uh, a gun two patch in one of three colors: gun two red, FDE, and OD green. But those are the prototypes that G made. G only made those three. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just laughing at some of the comments in the chat. I definitely do get in on the patch patch. Uh, I think you can buy in for fifteen dollars. Is that the entry level price? You, it, yeah, you, you, for fifteen you get, bucks, you can get a get a, a single random patch. Yeah, a single random patch, and um, but if you do the fifty, you get all twelve of them, which is really cool. So do get in on that if you get a chance. Oh, cool. so if, you, if you got, if it, I'm asking all of you out there on uh, Travis's uh, you know, live chat, you know, even those who are watching this video after. Uh, check the links in the live chat if Travis can put it uh, put it in the description below yeah. in the video. If you're yeah. watching this after, please do us a favor. Go the, go go check it out. Share the link. You know if, if you can't get patches, share the link with somebody who you you know might want these patches so that we can make this thing a reality. I just went and posted it on the comments for the video. So if you guys refresh your screen, it should pop up for you. So you're going to be good to go. So cool. All right, man. So, so so thanks, yeah. Travis. Yeah. Anybody have anything else you want to talk about before we go? Anything else on your minds at all, or anything important we want to announce? Or it's been a, it's been a quick little episode today. We've covered a lot of information. No. And again, just for those of you that were joining in late, I'm planning on moving Caliber Corner in April to uh, six to six to eight Eastern time, five to seven Central time on Thursdays, uh, so I can have the weekends free because of a lot of obligations I have coming up here on the weekends. So that'll I can be something finally I sleep in. I know, me too. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Well, no, I take that back. I'm gonna be driving. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no I, yeah. Just I sleep in anyway. I just come in late. There you go. There you go. I just you guys are all here. That's good. But we'll. It'll be an interesting environment doing the evening. I I have enjoyed. I've done a few just Monday afternoon ones when I get home from work, flipping on the camera, just showing some stuff off or talking about things. I really do enjoy that. It's a nice time of the day because I'm still fairly awake and stuff, and I think there's a pretty good sized crowd. So. Uh, but anyway, I just, it's just because I want to keep doing the show, but Saturdays are just not going to happen. So just so you guys know, uh, in April, expect it to change at some point, probably around the first week in April. Uh, we'll be doing that in about the next three or four weeks as a heads up. So, all right. Well, I don't know. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Foos, real quick, why don't you plug the uh, ammo company? Sports Shooters Ammo uh, Ammunition. That's right. <coughs> on Facebook and uh, SS Ammo on um, gun uh, gun channels. Um, or sports shooters ammunition at gmail.com. Hit me up for some nine millimeter. Um, my press is back up operational. I had a faulty tool head um, that took me out for a while. And then, um, so I got, you know, first rounds off that. I'm going to go shoot them hopefully today if the weather clears up to make sure my primer depth is good. And then I'll load another uh, 100, 150. And then shoot that, and if all good's there, I'll be back into production. Okay. Cool, man. Cool, cool. Good stuff. All right. So we'll see what's going on here. Just checking over on the gun channel side. There's a little bit of talk about some some AKs over there. Vanimal's posting quite a bit over there too. Later, gun channel dudes. Uh, all right. So anyway, let's go ahead and call it. I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up. We covered a lot of information in very little time. So uh, real quick, joining us on the gun channel side, we had Paper Plane Crash, Night Strike, Vandalistic Vlogs, and I think a few of you other guys chimed in there before I refreshed and it was there. Um, over here on the YouTube side, we had quite a few people joining us today. We had, uh-oh, Cowboy Swami says, in New Jersey, AR is not allowed, but what if you had a five-round clip or magazine? In New Jersey, I would imagine there's a New Jersey compliant AR that you can buy, just as there's a New York compliant AR, whether it's like a single pull, single shot, or something like that. Uh, Cowboy Swami, I'm, I'm not sure. It's more than just the magazine. There's a lot of features that the gun can't have. Many times it has to have like a closed pistol grip. It can't have a flash hider on it. No bayonet lug. Um, so I don't know. I don't think the magazine is necessarily the only thing, Swami. So I think in New Jersey, it's going to be... A lot of other things. Unfortunately, AWAG's not in here, but I can ask him, and I will let you know uh, for sure. Uh, what hey, it AWAG's is. got ARs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. He does. You can have them. There's just certain features you have to have, like uh, a, like a blocked five-round magazine, and you can't have a flash hider, and I think the bayonet lug has to be taken off of it. So it is possible. You can do so. But uh, no problem, Swami. Uh, join us today. We had AC97, Black Cat Outdoors, Steadly Mel the Nuts with us, uh, to who you P29s in the house. Hey, good morning. Uh, Vanessa Kitty was out there today. Tacos and French fries. 
Uh, Stedley, I think I mentioned to you before. Nice Strike was there and here. Everybody in the panel was there and here today. That's always a good thing. Is Gary out there? Poor conservative. Uh, let's see. AC97 SS Pond in the house. Frank Hellman was with us. Scott P79 was with us too. Sketchy Roll joining in. Uh, Squib, they were wondering if the uh, the forklift guy had disappeared. I told them that you were at home. So, <laughs> local yeah, but I, I do have to go supported. into work tonight. So, uh, ah, okay. <laughs> Well, forklift yeah. guy is the unsung hero when it squibs on chats. Big Bobby Lee Curtis joined us today too. Welcome, sir. Uh, again, local two twenty three kept uh, pulling back his comments. I'm not sure what what was going on, but local, I, I do look forward to your feedback. You do? Uh, no, you he do. always does that. That's just something he does. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. okay. And on everybody, he, he on comments on my stuff. videos, so I do appreciate the feedback you give me. And you know, he's kind of a kind of a reality check sometimes, but sometimes I need that. So, uh, otherwise, I think that's pretty much about it. Vanessa Kitty in the house. Again, Scott P79, Vandal was with us for a little while too. So SS Pond is joining us also. So guys, that's it. We'll go ahead and let everybody uh, go ahead and say goodbye. Make sure you check out Rick's Life as I See It. That is today, correct? Is that on at 2 Central, yeah. 3 Eastern, 3 Eastern? 3 Eastern. 3 Eastern time, 2 o'clock Central time. So make sure you check out Rick's Life as I See It over on gunchannels.com. Uh, let's go ahead and close it out. Calvaris, we'll start with you, man. Anything you want to say before we go? Just want to say thank you for the invite, and uh, everyone, you know, if you aren't subscribed to the people on the channel, I suggest you do so. There's good content all around. Uh, even have someone over there, you know, uh, one of the people in the chat, I won't name names, that's uh, making comedy versions of the uh, coffee reviews. Yes. But, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, that's for, I you know, appreciate the invite, Travis. No problem, man. No problem. I don't. I've got one more coffee. I'll be testing for blackout coffee, and uh, that's pretty much it. And then unless they come out with more varieties, I'm still drinking their coffee. I love it. But no, thanks, man. I do appreciate it. Uh, Foose, anything you want to say before we go? No. All right. Just Make sure you check out Spoon's Ammunition over there on Facebook. He's got really good prices. The shipping prices are very fair, so do check it out. Good stuff. All right. Gizzer Gary, anything you want to say before we go, bud? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> thanks for the invite. Yeah, um, check out my website, gizzardgary.com. Also, uh, check out Foul Territory Friday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. And I've also started doing a Sunday morning early bird chat Ooh, that extends hey. into the afternoon for the people who just sitting at home on Sunday and don't have anything to do, nice. which may go away come summertime, but right now it's still a popular thing. So well, I, can, just have, I got a Saturday morning spot opening up if you want it. <laughs> you should call it Early Bird Catches the Worm. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, support everybody on the panel. Uh, support Travis P11. I threw his Patreon link out there. So give him some love. Buy stuff from your websites. Uh, buy some 2A patch batches. I got mine. And uh, give him the bird. Thanks for the invite. All right, man. Cool. Thanks for joining us. All right, Kingpin. Anything you want to say before we go? Mano David's at work right yep. now. So thanks for having me. Oh, it was a pleasure. And uh, just make sure you don't marrow in your state. Here we go. Learn from the suffering of others, unfortunately. So uh, good to have you here with us, Kingpin, as always. So, all right. Uh, nice strike. Anything we say before we go? Yeah, I, I, I just need to issue a challenge to Calaveras and uh, Kingpin. Uh -oh. uh, I, I, I heard last week's uh, Caliber Corner, guys. All I'm going to say is, I got a 210 average. So, you know, anytime you guys want to go bowling, I'm, I'm down. I don't know if you added all my scores up throughout my entire life up to 210. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I broke 200 once in my life, but I'd have fun, you know, uh, you know, bowling up against you and you know, getting my butt kicked. <laughs> you know, I... I, whenever we do do have like a gun channels uh, or or even just you know a YouTube gun guys uh, uh, gathering, we should go bowling one of these. Well, oh God! At least get the, once. Get the just bumpers for, out yeah, for me, see, man. I, just, I, just for the fun of it, okay? Get the bumpers out. I, I haven't had a good reason to go to Tulsa, but if Kingpin <laughs> went to Tulsa, I would go for the David Bowling Challenge. Oh God! There <laughs> we go. David the David Bowling challenge. challenge. That can you beat me at bowl? And then we'll sit down and play Atari Bowling and see who's got the high score. Oh Ooh, man, Atari Bowling is where it's at. So, yeah, so, yeah. I've never played Atari Bowling. 
it sucks. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was epic when you were six, but now it's like, oh my god, they're a bunch of blocks. I could have done this with like a bouncy ball and some some like salt shakers or something, you know? I mean, it's yeah. Oh yeah, it's not. It's not. But, it's not. but, but in all seriousness, uh, yeah. check out yeah. GumTube.org. Check out the, the Night Strike One channel on YouTube, where we do hit or miss every Tuesday nights at nine o'clock because Travis is my co-host. Well, speaking I, of which, <laughs> I had I had Smeggy, and then Smeggy just ran off on me, and uh, he, I guess he, I guess he melted. About the co-host thing, this Tuesday, I may not be there. I just want to let you know, I've got every year on that Tuesday night, we've got that little fair that we set up for, and I'm in charge of an entire group. So I may be late joining in on Tuesday night, just so you know. Okay. okay. Um, and I, I'm try, I'll try to set up before we start, though. I think I usually work from like 6 to 7.30, getting everything set up, and then I jump in and join you. But if I'm gone, I'll try to get in when I can. But Tuesday, this is the only Tuesday I anticipate myself missing. At least you're giving me a head notice. Oh, so I yeah. I know yeah. you're not going to be there. And it's not that I, I mean, I, I want to be there, but this is an obligation I have, so I do have to be there for work. But yeah. uh, no, Tuesday, fun. I try to join in when I can. But if you don't see me, I'll at least let you know if I'm going to be on or not. So you have a heads up. So uh, I'm going to put cool. some links out, links out there anyways. Uh, let's see. Do it. Do it. We got guntube.org's link. So if you haven't done so already, go to guntube.org. And make an account, and uh, you know, upload a video or two. Not a million. I can't handle that yet. But <laughs> you know, don't don't do what Travis P11 did to vid me. Okay. I took vid me down. Apparently, and, uh, Alleg allegedly, it was never actually proven in the court of law. But <laughs> I'm still trying to get the Tulsa in April, so I'm doing an Indiegogo campaign in order to do that. I have rewards. Uh, it doesn't. If you want description on all the tiers, just left click on them, and it opens up. And it shows you all the descriptions and what you get. I got stickers. I've got challenge coins. You know, I, I actually have a package. I also have a package where if I, if you, if you choose the, the, the top tier, you get a $10 grab bag from Tulsa. I did mm -hmm. that for, uh, for Fine Ape last year. His videos on GunTube. So go check that out and see what he got last year. Is so, there a, you know, selection where we can get pizza? Uh, <laughs> there, 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 there may be one later, but rest, uh, rest assured that Night Strike will open the door this year. <laughs> I, I, I you will won't. open the door. <laughs> you won't. But, no, you uh, won't. With that, uh, that's all I got. Thanks for let me uh, jump in, Travis, and no thanks problem. for uh, thanks for taking the wake up text. Oh man, no! I was, dude. I've been up since five thirty, so I know. So it's all I. good. But it was funny to hear from you at like seven fifteen. It's like holy cow, man. Um. All right, but no, anyway, thanks for being here as usual. Uh, real quick, I want to mention this in the school. We'll get to you. Black Hat Outdoors did do a very cool video on the emergency tackle box. So if you want a basic box to throw in your bug out bag or throw in your vehicle, in case you'd have to jet and go somewhere so you got to live off the land, uh, having good fishing tackle for a variety of different species or whatnot is definitely something somebody should think, think about doing. He made a really cool video on it. It's not that expensive. I want to say he said everything was like $32 maybe or $25 bucks for everything. Obviously, it doesn't include a pole, but it's nice to know for somebody who doesn't fish or just wants to have something on standby, uh, something you could put together to add to your EDC, not your EDC, but your, your loadout or your bug out. And uh, talking so about doesn't include a pole, you know, uh, depending on <clears throat> what type of fish you think you might go for. Yeah. At an outdoor show before, uh, I scored a pen rod and reel for 20 bucks. Wow. So, uh, oh, okay. You know, yeah. if you – look around do your research and with a little bit of luck you can get into a you know rod and reel setup for pretty cheap cool man yeah you don't have to break the bank you can get a good decent pole that'll last you. a lot of a lot of local families here just buy a zebco off the rack at walmart and they'll fish with it for years you know uh you know you can get whatever you want you go as expensive as you want or as cheap as you want so um all right so squibby thanks for joining us anything you want to say before we go uh, yeah, I uh, started checking out a, a channel last night. Um, it's called The Armorer's Bench, and that's Armorers with a U. They're a British channel, but uh, they've got some interesting videos. I'm, I'm going to keep watching and and, uh, and check out some more of their videos. So if you're interested in uh, some it, – it's kind of like forgotten weapons as far yeah. as like odd or rare guns or, or just explaining uh, some stuff about, you know, how it was built or – why they did what they did. So um, I'm, I'm going to keep watching some videos here and, and uh, delve more into the channel. Um, 
today's kind of a, a busy day, but um, I appreciate the invite and uh, glad I was able to get on the show before I uh, have to take off for work. So time to go make some overtime. Back to the back to the forklifts, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, uh, I don't get Saturdays very often, but this year we've been really busy. It's it's uh, just another saying. sign that the economy's good. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna yeah. take it when I can get it. Right on, man. Cool. All cool. right. So bye, yeah. bye, Alicia. <laughs> bye, Alicia. All right. So guys, that's it. This has been Caliber Corner, episode number eighty-four. Make sure you do support GunTube.org. Help Night Strike get to Tulsa. Get in on those patches. Uh, man, buy lots of guns. Oh, 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 a few, uh, parting words here real quick. Some things to, uh, to tell your children, uh, those of you that have children, this is a, a serious moment. Seven things that every kid needs to hear. This was on the military arms channel this morning. Number one, I love you. Number two, I support you. Number three, I'm listening. Number four, I believe in you. Number five, I'm here. Number six, all gun laws are unconstitutional. And number seven, I care about you. You tell your kid that, everything's going to be fine, right? That's all you got to do. All right, guys, so that's Caliber Corner 84. You all take care. Have a great weekend. Again, be aware, Caliber Corner will be switching over to Thursdays in April, Thursday nights, Thursday evenings. So be watching for that. I'll try to make some announcements about it. In the meantime, guys, have fun. Be safe. Get out the range. And as always, we will talk to you soon. Shut up. Infringed. There we go. There we go. All right, I'm out.